This week I'm going to be talking about Sir Francis Galton. So Galton was actually Charles Darwin's cousin. They shared the same grandfather, which is kind of interesting, I thought. Uh, Galton studied medicine at the young age of 16. Um, he then went on to obtain his degree from Cambridge University in 1843. He had plans of um, completing some more formal education and getting other degrees, but then his father died, and so his formal education ended at that point. Uh, Galton was quite wealthy individually, so he basically had the freedom to do what he wanted, when he wanted. He could study whatever he wanted. Um, so this kind of led him to take a two-year-long trip to Africa. While he was there, he made maps of different unexplored territories in Africa, and then he kind of just realized that he had a passion for measuring things. So he was, um, in addition to map making, he was interested in predicting and measuring the weather. He suggested that fingerprints could be used for personal identification. He studied portraiture. He tried to determine which country had the most beautiful women. Uh, he measured degrees of boredom at different scientific lectures. And then he also tried to determine the effectiveness of prayer. He found that it was ineffective. And so when Charles Darwin's theory of evolution came around, he was actually quite pleased with that and definitely agreed with that. Um, in addition to measuring all these other things, he was interested in measuring intelligence in humans. So this um, interest kind of led to his theory of eugenics, um, which is using selective breeding of individuals to increase the overall intelligence of the population. So Galton was the first person to also state the nature versus nurture controversy, which obviously is still a huge deal today. Psychologists and scientists um, still talk about that. He's one of the scientists that made twin studies very popular to study the nature versus nurture controversy. He was also the first person to devise a word association test. So psychologists and scientists after Galton used this, um, the same word association methods for their own research and studies, and we still use word association methods today. Um, his work with word association kind of led the way for studies about memory and cognition as well. Um, Galton was also the first person to study mental imagery. He found that people showed differences in their ability to form mental images, and people um, thought that other people had the same ability to form images as they did. So he also had an anthropometric laboratory in 1884. He measured 9,337 humans, and he measured things like head size, arm span, standing height, sitting height, length of fingers, weight, reaction time, breathing capacity, and a bunch of other stuff. Um, this laboratory was the beginning of mental testing and psychology. So in 1888, he set up another laboratory that was very similar to the first one, except for this time he charged a small fee uh, to people so they could be measured, and then they were given a copy of their results that they could keep for their own records. So much of the anthropometric data that he collected was actually unanalyzed because this was before calculators and computers, so it's a lot harder to analyze data. Um, but future research has, researchers have actually been able to complete some analyses on some of his data, which is pretty interesting. Um, another one of Galton's many accomplishments was the concept of correlation. Um, he came up with that whole idea, and then Pearson later um, actually formed the, like Pearson's correlation. Um, Galton also introduced the median as a measure of central tendency because he found that the mean was influenced by outliers, which we obviously know that today too. Um, so over his lifespan, Galton wrote many books about his ideas and findings to share his theories with the world. So his work and discoveries were very crucial to the development of modern psychology.